I don't know if you guys remember, I think I repeated this few times. For the coefficient of restitution, whatever is in the numerator, you switch in the denominator. It's like one minus two in the denominator, two minus one. In the numerator is two minus one, you're gonna get one minus two, right? And same goes with you have here, you see? Two prime n, one prime n, here is one n and two n. So I see the majority of the students put like a minus b, a minus b. So we get the wrong answer. Quite few of the students, maybe three or four, even didn't use the normal components, like v2 minus va prime, v1 minus. B. So this should be for the oblique impact. This should be the normal component. Normal component is the velocity that the two things approach each other, right? It's like if you look from the side, you don't see this lateral motion. If you look from this perspective, I don't know if you can see the arrow. If you look par parallel to the plane of this slide, then you see these two things come close and separate. That is the normal component. You should not write the overall velocity. And what surprises me, this was an open textbook, open note, open solution, open everything. And you guys, quite few made mistakes in the equations. I'm not sure why. It might be a little bit of, you know, um, I don't know if it's a things, test anxiety, if it's a little pressure, if you were tired or whatever, but please make sure you're focused when you solve the problem. The other thing is uh, a, a good, maybe two or three students, let me grab the, um, I think I need to share everything. So I wanna show you the, um, the actual exam. In this problem, you remember a few times I mentioned the X or S or delta you use in energy equation is not the length of the spring, is the deformation. It's still, I think two or three students maybe, at least two, have used the length of the spring as X. That X squared that you have in the equation, half K X squared, that is the deformation. Imagine you have a long spring, like 10 meter long, sitting there, no force, no nothing. And you consider like 10 meter square times half K is a lot of energy that doesn't even exist, right? That could also, I think I repeated this a couple of times in the lecture and the, during the maybe uh, when we solve problems, but hopefully this time it is sticks in your mind for those who forgot. When, you, when we say the neutral length or unstretched length is 250, which is like when they get here, they're unstretched. When they are here, they're stretched. You have to get the length, subtract the initial length and see how much deformation you get. So hopefully you guys do not make these couple of mistakes I just mentioned later, but I don't know. I. This is not something complicated. I think it may be associated with the exam situation because I know exam time is stressful. If I take exam now, even dynamics that I teach, I may have some stress, maybe I screw up something. So I understand that part. But the way that you can overcome that, if there is something like that, is to understand the concepts and practice it. So please pay attention when we solve problems. That's the best way to learn. If you have questions, let me know immediately. I think I said this before, you don't have a silly question or a stupid question or whatever. Oh, this is so you know basic. I can assure you, any question you guys ask, if I present it to the class, and this is a small class, we should have, we could have like class of 30, 40 students, more than half cannot answer that, right? So when you ask a question, technically you do a favor to the rest of class, reminding them maybe they didn't absorb this so we can discuss it, okay? So please, if you have question, ask. If something needs to be clarified, let me know. 
you shouldn't feel shy to ask question but if for any reason you feel that way we have office hours right it's you and me one-on-one -on -one. there's no one else you can ask those questions then make sure if you need help you get help these two specifically the the coefficient of restitution i was surprised that you should open your notes c12 on the denominator 21 in the numerator or vice versa so that was surprising to me i thought that we probably should add this step now and also check your um midterm if you think you deserve more points somewhere i mean i i was careful as much as possible but sometimes specifically when you scan i have a hard time reading something if i miss something you can let me know i'm going to fix that okay now let's go back to the um regular business i switch i think we should close this guy and this guy i switch this a little bit i mean i just switched the image so we have the acceleration this was the problem we saw right the wheel has an angular omega of eight an angular acceleration of 16. So I put a figure that has 16 in it, but no big deal. You want to find acceleration of A. What we did last time was we solved the velocity first. And you may say why we didn't go to acceleration directly, right? Because if I ask as acceleration, why the heck we should go with velocity? I'm going to switch to the screen show what we have done before did you guys review this problem before coming to class to this lecture no okay i don't blame you but here's the thing um there has been some research done on learning okay a friend of mine once showed me a kind of book i think the title was making it stick or something like that it shows that when you review your course notes kind of immediately after the lecture it helps to understand and remember better right for example when we solve and in summer you may have one of two courses in regular you know semester you have four or five courses you could attend three different lectures in one day right maybe four in the evening and this is my suggestion you spend 10 minutes not more 10 to 15 minutes for each course just review what happened in the class because it's the same day you hopefully with your youth strong brain power and memory you remember something happened at 2 p.m or 10 a.m same day right go and review the lecture notes Look at the examples, see what has been done. So you remember the concepts and it's going to stick to your mind better. You don't have to spend a lot of time for the midterm final. If you add this 10, 15 minutes per lecture, it will be more efficient than spending like five hours reviewing the whole book, going through the even the textbook itself to remember. The other thing is when you come to the class, now, in regular class, you guys come five, 10 minutes early, sit in the class because when you finish the other class, you walk through the building or whatever, right? Spend maybe five minutes, review the last lecture to remember what we have done. So when we start, it's almost like a warm up for sports, right? Imagine the best athletes just come out of the locker room, and start running. There's no efficiency. It takes five, 10 minutes for body to warm up. It's the same with the brain. When you look at these concepts and remember what has been done, it helps you to follow things better, right? So this is my suggestion. You can try it. It doesn't hurt. And I've done that myself. Um, it worked for me and it has worked for many people. As I said, there's research that if you review the concept almost immediately, it will stick better, okay? now you haven't done it for this time hopefully you do it next time um sorry this is uh this is not there let me see where we are okay so the problem asks for acceleration yeah that drawing i me and my son did this uh 
cartoon from Phoenix and Ferb. I did it, and this has been there for four years now. So um, the problem showed this mechanism that you have seen. The problem asked for acceleration. We started with velocity. We're going to continue the same steps, so you're going to get more exposure to this. But as I mentioned, this is a vector equation, right? So as you find each term of the vector equation, right? And then this one goes here, then you add them together and solve. We did it for velocity. We got the equation settled. We came up with this vector equation with i's and j's. Because i and j are perpendicular direction, they are independent of each other. I separated the i component of the vectors and j component of the vectors. I got two equations for the two unknowns that I have, right? Now, and the rest is just a solution. Now we're gonna do exact same thing for acceleration. Again, if you look at this mechanism, let me clean this a little bit because we need to bring it down. Okay. And let's get rid of some of this stuff. So this was my mechanism, right? The, the blue vector here, oops, the blue vector here, then the red vector here, and this green slider. Okay? Now to write the equations for acceleration, I want you guys to have a look at um, your notes, see what equation we have. What is the equation for acceleration? Now, we're going to review the whole concepts from the beginning. Wheel has rotational motion. I'm going to drop the word pure or only because now rotational is rotational, okay? Slider A has translational motion. So it technically moves on a straight line back and forth. Now link AB has general motion. Okay, what it means is simply this. It has a combination of rotation and translation. The vector equations we developed on Wednesday was for this kind of motion. So we're gonna use that. And we relate, so we use link AB and relate motion of A to the motion of B. So there are two points on the same rigid body. We had the equations. So practically, 
if we go back to the slides and let me uh, get back to the slides. I'm gonna show this to you. We're gonna come back. If you wanna take the notes, I let you do that, okay? Remember this? We had this thing. Technically, this is how link AB moves. The only difference, my reference here is on A and the target is B, right? In that problem, it's just the reference is on B and target is A. We just switch the letters. You know, the letters is just arbitrary, it doesn't matter, right? So if that's the case, this was the equation we had for velocity, right? We use this equation. And now for acceleration, we use this equation, or technically this equation with simplified, instead of this, we're gonna get minus omega square RBA. So this is the vector equation we need to use to relate acceleration of A to B. Any question about this? I mean, you could look at your notes, but I wanted to show you what we do here. And now we're going to go back to the slides, write this equation, find each term, and move forward, okay? So if you do that, the equation we have is going to be AA equals AB plus alpha, this should be for AB, cross RA respect to B, minus omega AB square RA respect to B, okay? This is the equation we need to use. And now you may see why we had to start with with velocity because to solve acceleration, I need omega AB and omega AB is just what we found in the velocity part. So you always have to go to velocity first, find all omegas that you need and then come back to acceleration. Any question about the concept? Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did last time. Hopefully you remember. The first thing we did, I'm gonna go with the same, yeah, I'm gonna do with different colors so you see what's going on. So for A, acceleration of A, if you look at the motion of A again, A goes back and forth here. So its acceleration is gonna be linear and in X direction only, right? So if I want to write it, I don't know if it goes to the right, if it goes to the late, left, if the acceleration is positive, that means the velocity increases or decreases. I don't know any of those. So I assume the acceleration is positive, just a number times i. So this is the vector we have for a, okay? For b, I'm gonna use blue for B, okay? What kind of motion B has? I asked this before you answered, so hopefully you remember. Rotational. Rotational, which means if, if, if B rotates about a fixed point, it's, it's gonna have two accelerations, normal and tangential, right? So AB is gonna be AB normal, and AB tangential. AB normal as a vector is gonna be minus omega of the disk square RB, right? That's how normal acceleration is. And AB tangential is gonna be alpha disk cross RB. Any question about this concept? 
we just substitute normal and tangential. Now, let's just put the numbers here. By number, I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna put the number, I'm gonna just go with, so you're gonna get minus omega disk square, RB, we found RB somewhere here, you remember? This is RB. And if you look at this blue vector, you may realize that the horizontal component is negative. So you're gonna get minus R cosine theta I, oops. Plus, the, this is positive, the Y is positive. Plus R sine theta J. Let's just simplify this first and then we go to the next one. So A, B, normal. If it's simpler, you're gonna get R omega disk square cosine theta I minus R omega disk square sine theta J. Okay. So this is normal acceleration. For tangential, you can get alpha disk cross RB. Now, the problem says omega is this way, alpha is also this way. Was this a positive omega or negative omega in XYZ coordinate system that we have? If you use your right hand rule, does it give you a positive K component or negative K component? Come on guys. Negative. So if omega is negative, alpha is the same direction is gonna be negative. So you're gonna get minus alpha d times k cross rb, which is this guy, minus r cosine i plus r sine i, sine j, sorry. And if you expand this, you're gonna get minus minus plus, you're gonna get r alpha d, cosine theta j minus minus again plus r alpha d sine theta i. So k times i is j, k times j is minus i, and that minus and this minus becomes plus. Okay, so technically, this is your AB tangential. The next term, I'm going to go with the uh, with this kind of purple. Oops. Okay. Alpha AB cross RA respect to B. Again, we assume last time omega is this way, right? and we got negative, it showed our direction was wrong is other way. I'm gonna make the same assumption that alpha AB is positive. If I get a positive number at the end, this direction is right. If I get a negative number is other way. So is this uh, sign convention clear? When you do not know something, you cannot do this for friction. You remember when we talked about friction, we said you have to make it right because you can see how it goes. But for parameters like this, you don't know if alpha is positive, negative. You just assume it's positive. You solve the problem. The final number tells you if your assumption is right or wrong. Okay? If that's the case, this is going to be alpha AB, K 
cross this r vector which gives you a positive x and positive y component okay we have it before i'm not going to go through details i'm just going to use this angle psi and then just clean that mess a little bit so alpha a b k cross so it's going to be the x component is going to be l cosine phi l cosine phi i plus l sine phi j okay if you expand this you're going to get alpha a b l cosine phi j minus alpha a b l sine phi i this term also done this is the final okay any question so this is just just cross product i suggest you guys i gave you some homework already i think you can start working on them by the way and please do that it's going to be due next saturday midnight you have one full week plus one day or two days technically if you consider two days to solve them and this is a good practice right there and you have a couple of more exam problems that you can just practice to get kind of this cross products and sine cosine theta things sorted out in your mind the last term i'm going to go with the green omega a b omega square r a b so omega square omega a b square r a respect to b is simply omega a b square times l cosine phi i plus l sine phi j and you expand this let's just put the negative here so we get the negative all together minus omega a b square l cosine phi i minus omega a b square l sine phi j okay so i got all the terms i need So I got my AA, AB normal, AB tangential, alpha cross RAB, and omega square RAB, right? These are the terms I need. Um, now we can substitute all of them into this equation, right? One by one. You guys can scroll and see your paper easily. I have to go up and down. So if I hope it's not confusing. So the acceleration equation will be like this. From the left side, AA times I is equal to normal acceleration R omega D square cosine theta i minus r omega d square sine theta j then you know what let's just write everything with their with its own color it might be easier for you guys to follow okay i'm going to get this with blue and then tangential acceleration r alpha d cosine theta j plus r alpha d sine theta i 
that was this guy. Then we go alpha cross RAB. which is going to be plus alpha a b l cosine phi j minus alpha a b l sine phi i and then the last term this guy minus omega a b square l cosine phi i minus omega a b square l sine phi j so again if you review this is this is a b This is alpha AB cross RB A respect to B. And this is minus omega AB square R A respect to B. Right. And the, the left side is obviously A. Again, I got one large vector equation, right? Because I have the color code, I think this is obvious. Let me just erase this thing. I have one large vector equation. The question is, sometimes you get lost. What are we looking for? What are unknown in this equation? A, A, the acceleration of A is unknown. Omega D, we know it. Alpha D, we know it. Omega A B we know it all L's and alphas and thetas and you know uh, the the phi's we know it. So the second unknown is alpha A B. So these are the two unknowns, right? So, so do you remember how we solved this problem before? What we did on Wednesday? We have two unknowns, one vector equation. How we get two equations out of this? I'm going to ask Heisey. How I'm going to solve this problem? One vector equation to unknowns. Do not remember? So let's ask Ye Yang. Ye Yang. How we solve yeah. this? How we solve this problem? Cool. And I'm gonna go with the majority of the class. Kelly, how we solve this problem? Um, you like separate the i's and j's into their own equations. Exactly. So most of the students, if you learn it, most of the students learn it because you represent majority, right? So what we did last time was separating the I components, make it one equation, and then J components, <coughs> excuse me, as the second equation. So let's do that. I'm going to go in I direction. On the left-hand side, we have AA. On the right-hand side, we have this guy, R omega D square cosine theta plus R alpha D sine theta minus alpha AB L sine phi minus omega a b square l cosine phi this is the first equation in j direction on the left hand side there's nothing so zero 
you have this guy minus r omega d square sine theta then you have this guy plus r alpha d cosine theta then this plus alpha a b l cosine phi um sorry i think i lost the screen sharing let me just share the screen again this and then the last term minus omega a b square l sine phi two equations for two unknowns the two unknowns are a a and alpha a b if we look the second equation we have only alpha a b so it might be easier to use this equation to solve right I'm going to use equation, the second equation. Then you're going to get alpha AB is equal to R omega D square sine theta plus L omega AB square L sine phi minus r alpha d cosine theta divided by l cosine phi i think i took um this this and this to the left hand side this two become positive this becomes negative and then divided by this coefficient so that's what we get okay you have all the numbers i'm going to give you 30 seconds to solve this problem, this, this e equation, and see what you've got. So if you calculate that, you should get this number. See if you get this. Remember, R is 0.15, omega D is 8, alpha D is 16, L is 0.5, theta is 30, and phi is 60. You put these numbers here, you should get this guy. And let me know if you get the same number or different number. I got the same number. Okay, good. Now, if you go to the i-th equation, technically you substitute alpha a b, solve for this equation, and then your a a will be this much. Minus 12.5 meter per square second. Okay. 
and I can plug in the numbers, but that is basically like a elementary stuff. We can save time. And I usually calculate it wrong with my own calculator anyway, so I just got it from the manual. Okay. Any question? So we solved one full example showing how you could do velocities, accelerations, get all the components, a lot of IJKs and cross products, but it's something I call straightforward. It is lengthy, yes, you see, there's a lot of, I mean, some of them I explained, but there's a lot of calculations here, but we didn't do anything tricky, right? We just got the equations, plug in the values, get the cross products. The only trick that you need to remember, and if you do it a couple of times, hopefully you remember, is when you get to the vector equation, right? You divide it into I and J's, right? And then you get two equations you solve for two unknowns. And if you look at the problems in the book, many of them, this is something we call crank slider. This mechanism that you see here, let me just redraw it. The mechanism you see here, oops. Right? This is the crank. This is the slider. This is the connecting rod. It's technically like a car's piston cylinder stuff. In car's piston cylinder, the piston is on the top and moves vertical. This goes horizontal. It could be any angle, doesn't matter. Instead of disc or wheel, we can simply have a link, right? like B, A, and this is technically the same. Because for this disk, we don't care about the rest. This is what we are concerned about, right? So it could be anything and you can solve the problem. The angles could be different. If you look at examples in the textbook, many of them are like this, okay? Any question about this problem? Did it get the same number for the for A value? Or you didn't check? You can check it later, that's okay. You see, that's what I said. You have a link, which is your crank or your wheel. This is exact similar, right? You have a connecting rod and a slider. This is almost identical. Every step you do there, you repeat here. I'm not gonna solve this problem. I'm gonna solve this problem, okay? Which is a slightly different because both points are pins if you look at here, still B moves on a circular path and A sliding up and down. So technically is the same, but slightly different. So we're gonna do this. In this case, the information for the slider is given, which doesn't make big difference, but just to see how it works.
So A goes down with a speed of four feet per second and acceleration of seven feet per square second. We are looking for the angular velocity and angular acceleration of link AB. Okay. I think all the dimensions are given. So R, the radius of that half circle is two feet. The location of A here below this center line, if you call it H, is also two feet at this moment, obviously. See how we do this. So this is technically how the problem looks like, right? We are looking for omega AB and alpha AB. Even if the problem doesn't ask for omega AB, you saw in the previous problem to find alpha AB, we have to do the velocities first, okay? So obviously we have only one link here. So we use link AB and general motion, I'm gonna get VB is equal to VA plus omega AB plus RB respect to A. Now, to make sure we get these things right, I'm just gonna draw this vector AB with this thick red arrow, right? And then this is gonna be like Y component and this is gonna be X component And because of the shape of the mechanism and the position they are right now, you cannot simply go like sine, cosine, theta stuff. You have to calculate this. Let's call this L, Y, and let's call this L, X, okay? The whole length is L. How much is LX? And my drawing is not as accurate, but technically, let me just fix it a little bit here. Right, this is R. This is also R, right? So if I want to find this length is technically R. Look at here for a second, please. Don't write anything. I'm going to explain it. When I write, you can follow. So this LX is R plus this length. How much is the green part? If you look at this triangle, it's going to be R cosine theta, right? You guys follow? So this part is going to be R cosine theta. This part is R. So technically, I'm going to write it here. LX is R plus R cosine theta. Right?
Now, again, pay attention here. If you want to find Ly, oops, the vertical component, it's going to be this length, which is H, plus this length, which is this guy, right? And that is R sine theta. So technically, Ly is going to be H plus R sine theta. And we can calculate it simply, right? We're going to get Lx is, I'm going to just get the numbers here because it makes it messy when we go in the equations. I usually stick with the parameters, but this time we may have to get the numbers. So theta is 60, is that right? Problem says at this position that, yes, theta is 60. Right, theta is 60. So 60 cosine, so that the top, the LX is gonna be three feet and LY is gonna be Three point seven three. So if that's the case, R B respect to A is going to be three I plus three point seven three J. <clears throat> that part might have been a little tricky because you usually go with like sine cosine directly. This geometry was a slightly different. Okay. Any question about this? So I use the geometry to get all these parameters. Let me get rid of some of this stuff, make it nicer. So now that we have, we have all this stuff removed, we can simply solve the problem, right? So we just need to get this guy back here. Now I'm gonna do exact same thing we did before. We're gonna go find VB, VA and Omega cross RA, okay? The slightly different case here is for VB, you do not have like R omega stuff like that. If you look at the path of motion, B <clears throat> moves in a slot that looks like this, right? Technically. So if B, if point B moves in this slot, which direction is going to be its velocity? <clears throat> you remember, for every point, we have one condition that always apply. Velocity is what? Velocity is always tangent to the path of motion, right? Now here, because this theta is 60 degree, 
tangent to that guy is going to be 30 degree. Okay. So technically, VB, and I'm going to do it with blue, is going to be something like this. Right? Which gives you a horizontal component. And so if this is theta, this is also theta. Okay. So VB has a negative X component and a positive Y component. And you can write it in terms of VB. The value is going to be minus VB, whatever the magnitude is, sine theta I plus VB cosine theta J. Right? Any question about this part? B has a circular motion. It has a guide that has to go through that circular guide. I use that, get the direction of velocity, get its X and Y components and write it here. Next one is gonna be VA. VA is easy. It gives us going down. So VA as a vector is minus VA I. The magnitude is four, I'm gonna substitute later. I usually do not substitute the numbers at the beginning because it helps you to understand which term means what when we move forward. And then this term, omega AB cross RB respect to A. Again, if this goes down, I'm expecting that this rotates this way. I might be wrong. It's an assumption. So with this direction, my omega is positive. So it's going to be omega AB K cross this guy. Three I plus 3.73 J. And if you expand this, you're gonna get three omega ABI plus 3.73 omega AB. Is it plus or minus? Sorry, K times K cross I gives you J. K cross J gives you plus I or minus I? Do the IJK circle I showed you? Tell me what? Minus. Minus I, exactly. So this is one term. This is another term. This is another term. I'm going to substitute all of them into the main equation. So you're going to get minus VB sine theta I plus VB cosine theta J equals minus VA. And sorry, this is J. Uh, VA goes down, so it's in J direction. Why it's wrote I, I'm not sure. This is J. Then plus three omega AB J minus 3.73 omega AB I. Again, one equation with two unknowns. My two unknowns are VB and omega AB. What we do, we separate I and J components.
in i direction, you're going to get minus vb sine theta is equal to minus 3.73 omega ab. <clears throat> in j direction, you're going to get vb cosine theta equals minus va plus 3 omega ab. You guys solve this for omega ab and vb and give me the numbers. I think you can do it with like maybe one minute, two minutes. So if you solve that, I'm just going to give you the final numbers because this is just a very simple math. VB, it's going to be 20.39 feet per second. And omega AB, excuse me, it's going to be a positive 4.73 radian per second. Any question about this? So the overall procedure was the same. Getting the vector equation here, right? And plugging the numbers for each of them. Finding VB was a slightly different because you had to use, it is tangent to the path and get the two components. The rest is just the same. So you learn this trick. If, if there's a slot that something goes through it, how you find velocity acceleration using the normal tangential stuff, tangent to the path and stuff like that. Okay. Now for acceleration. Let me clean these things a little bit. I'm going to have to get rid of those velocity terms. And I'm going to get this down altogether to see what's going on. I'm going to bring this down. And I'm going to get rid of these velocity terms because we want to do acceleration. Right? We can get it of this thing to make it simpler. Okay. For acceleration, we're going to do the same. AB is AA plus alpha AB plus RB respect to A minus omega ab square rb respect to a this is the same equation you had in your notes okay
Now I'm going to have to find the values for each of them. We're going to go with the same um, sign stuff or the color code. I will go for AB with red. So the question is what kind of motion B has? And we answered that already. B has a circular motion, right? Moving on a circle. This is the path of motion for B, a half circle. Going through half circle means circular motion, means its acceleration has two components, right? Tangential and normal. So AB practically should be considered as AB normal plus AB tangential, right? Let me remove this uh, AB vector so then we can take care of the things better. The normal acceleration for B, it's going to go this direction, right? Going from B. like this, right? Sorry, not that direction. The normal acceleration has to be toward the center. That is not the center. The center is center of rotation. So this is gonna be the normal acceleration. And then the tangential acceleration, of course, is tangent with the path right so this is a b t and this is a b n right now, to find the values, there's not R alpha, R omega, stuff like that. You have to get the two components, right? For this guy and these two components for the green guy. And again, if this angle is theta, this is going to be theta. So I'm going to write them one by one. How about I write the, um, the tangential acceleration with green so we follow the same color code. Okay. So AB tangential is going to be ABT. Let's just call it AT. Or we can keep it this way. The X component is negative, as you can see here, minus ABT sine theta. The Y component, this guy, is positive. Let me write it nice. Minus A B. T sine theta I plus A B T or sine theta J. This is the tangential component. For the normal, we're gonna go, this is the horizontal component, which is negative. 
this is the vertical component, which is also negative. And this angle is theta. So a b normal as a vector is going to be minus a b. Now, for normal acceleration, how much is normal acceleration? Remember, a n was v square over rho. A t was simply v dot. Or we can write here r omega square, right? There's no omega, so we can stick with the first equation. So if that's the case, I'm going to use this value here. So then you're going to have minus vv squared over r, right? Cosine theta i minus vb square over r sine theta j. You guys follow? So <clears throat> we got the velocities, this guy, sorry, the, the component of acceleration, this guy and this guy. And then we got the XY components put it there. So it's just simple geometry. You have to be careful that you pick the right theta and right sine cosine with the right sign positive negative for the component now that we did that we're going to go to b sorry to a again acceleration of a is simple is just minus a a times j we can even plug the numbers minus seven J, this is done. Any question? Am I going too fast? Okay. Do you need like a break or something to refresh? Or we're good. You want a break? Okay. 12 15 come back uh, sorry 11 15 come back 11 20 and we continue okay okay <clears throat> let's continue with this i got the first two terms um i'm gonna go with the uh, i don't know this purple thing and get this term alpha a b cross r b a again alpha a b is something i do not know i suppose it's positive right and i can write it that way expand the cross product alpha a b times k Cross product of <clears throat> RBA, which was three and three seven three, three I plus three point seven three J, and this is going to give you three alpha AB J minus three point seven three alpha AB I. And this is this. Okay. The last one, I'm going to go with this dark brown for omega AB RB. So minus omega AB square times R, R B respect to A 
it's simply minus three omega a b square i minus 3.73 omega a b square j i just multiplied omega a b by this term and simplified it so this is the last term <clears throat> so equations we have <clears throat> excuse me it's like this is one a b tangential two a b normal three a a four alpha cross r b and five omega square r b <clears throat> we're going to substitute all of them into this equation and see what we get on the left hand side which is a b and i'm going to use the same color so you can follow first tangential acceleration of b so minus a b t sine theta i plus a b t cosine theta j then we have the normal acceleration minus vb square over r cosine theta i minus vb square over r sine theta j <clears throat> this is the left hand side right you know what let me just write this down below so we can easier oops i'm gonna put it here and put this guy here and now this is equal to The right hand side starts with AA, which is minus 7J. Then alpha cross RB. Which is going to be minus 3 alpha AB J minus 3.73. alpha a b i and then the last term omega square r b a minus 3 omega a b square i minus 3.73 omega a b square j this is your equation Okay. Again, we have two unknowns. One is going to be tangential acceleration for B. And the other one is alpha AB. To solve for these two unknowns, again, we separate I and J components right so in i direction on the left hand side minus a b t sine theta minus v b square over r cosine theta on the right hand side we're going to get minus 373 alpha a b minus 3 omega a b square for the j you're going to get a b tangential cosine theta minus 
pb square over r sine theta is equal to minus 7 minus 3 alpha ab plus 3.73 is it plus or minus this should be minus sorry about that this is minus and this is minus and this is minus omega a b square two equations solving for two unknowns Okay, remember VB, we calculated in velocity part, which was this much. And omega AB, we calculated. So that's why we do these things, right? Omega AB is known, VB is known, and the rest are numbers. Okay? And if you solve this, and I, you, that's the, you know the 10 minutes I told you you can spend later. I'm going to give the numbers later. You review this and finish this and see how it goes. But I think it's not wise to spend time with this like elementary school or middle school calculations. I'm just going to give you the numbers. If I have it here, let me see. Okay. So AB tangential. is 607 feet per square second. And interestingly, with a negative sign, which means we assume it's in this direction, is not, it is in this direction, okay? And alpha AB is also minus 131 radian per square second, which means we assume alpha AB in this direction. That was wrong. It is in this direction. Okay, that's how things work with the negative positive sign. Any question about this problem? Hmm? Can you solve something like this? So we have a couple of more examples in the notes. I recommend you guys go and try them. We have few in the homework. Some of them you have to submit, some of them for practice, and there's tons of more in the textbook. I'm not expecting each of you solve like 50 or 20 problems to get this. Obviously, it's not as, I mean, you can't even spend that much time. But if you spend time to do two, three problems in a way that you feel comfortable getting this omegas and alphas and IJKs and cross products, I think that should be enough. Can you do this as a quiz next week? Yep, no. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Because you're gonna have a quiz when we finish this. Okay. So let's go back to the slides and finish the chapter. The last topic we cover here is called instant center of rotation or instant center of zero velocity. It has a kind of weird name, but I'm gonna explain you what this means. For any rigid body with general motion, right? Because when you say general motion, we say it has a combination of, like for example, I don't know if you can see, it has a combination of translation and rotation. So it's not rotating about fixed point. It has a general motion. 
But the idea is at any moment, you can find one point on that rigid body that has zero velocity, which means it looks like your rigid body is momentarily rotating about that point. It's like rotating about fixed point. It's not a fixed point. At that moment, that point has zero velocity. So you'll see how this simplifies some of the analysis. So let's just have an example of a bike wheel, right? When you ride your bike, you may realize that at the contact point of the tire with the ground, unless you can do some drifting stuff with bike, which is difficult to do, or it's like slippery, icy stuff, usually the bike tire rolls on the ground. And when it rolls, that means the point that touches the ground does not slide, right? Rolling means, I don't know if you can see my hand like this, right? It doesn't slide. If it rolls, the point that touches the ground has the same velocity of the ground. Does that make sense? So what is the velocity of ground, by the way? Come on, guys. Zero, Zero right? So the, the point of the tire that touches the ground at that particular moment has zero velocity, which means you can consider, it looks like the whole thing rotates about this point. You may say, how the heck this could, pass, this could be possible? Look at this graph. This is like the same wheel. This is the ground. We know A has zero velocity, right? If I wanna find velocity of B, and write this general motion analysis vector form. You say VB is VA plus omega cross RBA. This is RBA, this is omega, and that's the equation. Now, if A has zero velocity, what happens here? This is gonna be zero, right? Then velocity of B is simply omega cross RBA, which means it's, it looks like this wheel rotates about fixed point. Remember, this was equation for the velocity rotating about fixed point, right? So if your reference point has zero velocity, it looks like your object rotates about that point, but that is not a permanent because as this rolls, A kind of go up and go around and change. So anytime, of analysis, the point that touches the ground has zero velocity, right? And you can consider that as IC. What is good about IC? You can consider that as center of rotation and simply get your velocity by R omega. Does that make sense? So you do not have to do all the crazy stuff, like vector analysis, everything. It's like, okay, this is my vector. Velocity, if you rotate about fixed point, is perpendicular to the r. So this is going to be the direction, the magnitude r omega. For point o, this is the radius oa, velocity perpendicular to oa, and the magnitude omega r oa. For c, this is technically the radius of rotation about IC instant center, velocity is gonna be perpendicular to that. So you can simply find the velocity by just what R omega, by just one R omega, and uh, the direction is perpendicular to that R omega, right? It makes life easier. Specifically, if you wanna find the velocity of multiple points, you don't have to write this equation like three, four times for each of them. You can simply use this. Is the whole concept clear? So we start from relative velocity equation. If 
there is a point which we say there's always one single point that has zero velocity, then it looks like your object rotates about that, that point. That's why sometimes we call it instant center of rotation because it looks like rotation about A, or we call it sense center of zero velocity. Both expressions are used. So the question is how we're going to find that. This is an interesting um, um, analysis. You see this thing? This looks like the point that touches the ground, that's icy. See, when it sits there, it's icy. Now, if you want to analyze how that's possible, look at it here. It's much more, much more obvious that the point goes to the end, temporarily stops and goes the other side, temporarily stops and goes the other side. So practically, that's how it shows IC works. You see, goes, stops IC, stops IC, you get the second one. And as you add all of them, it kind of simulates the rotation of a circle and it shows how the IC works. Interesting, huh? So if you analyze the motion of any point on the wheel of your tire, it kind of looks like that. It goes on the ground, stops, and goes back. So that's how it works. I hope this kind of gives you a visual understanding of how the IC things are. Now, how we can find IC? Let me get to the tablet and show you how this is done. Imagine you have an object, it could be any shape, like something like this, right? And then you have like point A and two arbitrary points, point B, or like, okay, point B. If I know the direction of velocity for two points, so I'm going to write this here. If we know the direction of velocity for two points on the rigid body, we can find I see. How? You remember, let's say for example, A goes like the velocity of A is this. And the velocity of B is, I don't know, like that. Okay. What is the condition for the velocity and the radius of rotation? What is the geometrical condition that we can use? Velocity is always tangent to the path of motion, right? And if rotates about fixed point, velocity is always perpendicular to the radius. So remember, if the object, or if the point, because we are talking about point A and point B. If a point rotates about a fixed point, it 
its velocity is perpendicular to the radius of rotation. Okay. So we're going to use this. How? Remember, the radius of rotation goes through the center of rotation, right? So I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to A. And say, okay, the center of rotation should be on this green line. Okay. Let me change the velocity of B a little bit or just the position of B whole thing together. Let's say like this is VB, okay? Now, the velocity of B is also perpendicular to its own center of rotation, right? So I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular to this. Like that. The intersection of the two line is IC. Why? Because both of them looks they rotate about fixed point, right? So if you have any object and you know you know the direction of two velocities, you can draw two lines perpendicular to the velocity and find IC. Does that make sense? Now that I have found IC, if someone asks me, hey, come on, how about velocity of C? For example, find me the velocity of point C. Say, okay, I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this. The velocity is going to be in this direction. How much is the value? If I know this velocity and this R, Omega is going to be like VA over RAIC. You find this, then you say VC is Omega times RC with respect to IC, right? You want to find another point like point M? No problem. I'm going to draw this line, right? and get the velocity perpendicular to that, it's going to be Vm. You see, if you find IC to find velocity of any point, you just need omega and R like MIC, that point, that, that distance. And it helps you to find velocity quickly. Any question? Okay, I'm going to stop it here. On Monday, we're going to continue this concept and finish it with some examples. You have enough information for now to solve many of those problems. The only problems you can yet use is the IC problems, okay? The rest, you can do it. Please spend some quality time with focus, review the stuff, try to solve the homework problems. If you need help with any part of it, let me know. We can meet and address your, you know, concerns or questions. Okay? Do you guys enjoy the lecture? It was a little heavy in terms of calculations, like a lot of I's and J's and stuff. But remember, as I said before, chapter um, 16 is the base for dynamics of most of the systems you deal with. If you design any machinery, any production line or work in any of those things from engines, cars engines, to transmissions, to other parts, 
If you go to robotics, it's the same concepts, more complicated, but most mechanisms in the industry have this two dimensional motion and to analyze them, you have to understand this chapter very well, okay? Any question or comments? Okay, let me take the screenshot of the class for attendance. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend, I guess. It's today's Friday, right? Happy Friday. And see you guys on Monday. Goodbye.